What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So I get asked this question a lot, so I thought I'd make a quick video about it, talking about when you should use groups and when you should use components. So I will note today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to give start to finish instruction on things like this for SketchUp. So if you're looking for more SketchUp instruction, registration for the course is closing tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. So if that's something you want to check out, make sure you check out that link at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I get asked the question a lot, when do I use groups and when do I use components? And there's a fairly simple answer to this, but I wanted to walk through some kind of examples of when this can be important. So basically my rule is anytime there's a chance that I'm gonna be creating a copy of something, I create a component. Otherwise, I create things as a group. So for example, one of the things that you do a lot of is when you extrude walls inside of SketchUp. So let's say I was ex to extrude this to 10 feet, I would probably create this as a group. So you always wanna group your geometry to keep things from merging together and creating a big mess. So for example, like I don't want these things connected because the faces stick together. So what I would do for my walls is I would select them, right click, and I would make them a group. And the whole reason for that is to keep these from merging together so that you don't have that sticky geometry sticking things together and anytime you make changes, it kind of turns into a nightmare. But there's really no reason in this situation unless I'm gonna be creating a copy of these walls to make this into a component. So if you remember one of the things about components, and we'll jump over here for a second, is this is a row of groups, this is a row of components. Well, if you make a change to a component, all of the other instances of that object inside of SketchUp are linked together. So you can see how if I make one change to this object, all of the other objects change as well. Um, however, if I was to do the same thing, over here, you can see how if I make a change to one group, the other groups are not linked to this original group. So you don't have that where things are changing inside of your model other than the thing that you're changing. So this can be really, really useful for things that repeat inside of your models. I'll talk more about that in a second. But so for example, these walls I would make as a group. So if I was to extrude my roof like this, and I've already got the whole profile modeled in here all the way across the way that it needs to be, then I would create my roof as a group because there's not a copy of it anywhere and I'm not gonna need to make adjustments. However, let's say that we were to only model half of this and use symmetry to model the other half. Well then, I would wanna make this a component. So I would want to make this half, I would call this a roof half. Need to make sure this box is checked. Then, if I was to make a copy of this and flip it with the scale tool, and then move it back, well now, you can see how that component is changing at the same time as this component. So you could use this to use symmetry to only have to model half of your roof instead of your whole roof. So if there was something in here like this roof copy, I would want to use a component because whenever I change this one, I'm gonna want this one to change as well. So another example of this is if I was modeling out a table. So let's say we had a very simple table like this and let's say I was to model out the apron. Well, if I was just going to model the apron like this, I would make it a group. So I would say this would be three and a half inches thick. I would select all of it and I would make it a group because there's no copies of it anywhere that are going to need to change. However, if I was to model this out as if I was creating a cut list, what I would do instead is I would make this a component and I would call this apron piece and we could go ahead and say it's 38 inches long. And then I would just make multiple copies of it in order to make my apron. So I would use the rotate tool in copy mode. And then these four copies would be instances of that same part. So if I ever needed to make a change, like let's say I wanted to shave off something on the bottom, or let's say I was to like uh, um, round off one of the edges, the others would change as well. So in this situation, a component 
would make more sense for each one of these, where this, a group, would make more sense. And so I would do the same thing for the legs. Um, in a situation like this, I always make the legs a component. I'd call this table leg in case I ever decided I needed to make changes. I would take this, do the same thing. I would make copies of these. And then the legs are all instances of the same component. And that means if I ever decided to make a change to one of them, so let's say I wanted this to taper inward or something like that, um, you can see how because these are linked, that means I wouldn't have to go back and do the same work four different times anytime I make a change. So it really kind of depends on the way that you're building things, but as a general rule, when things repeat, you want to use components. And then the last example I have of this is, let's say we were modeling out a house like this one, and we had a light fixture. It was going to be on the outside of the wall. And I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this. So we'll have two of them. But let's say we modeled these all out as groups. Whoops. So let's say I took this object and I had a bunch of them running along the face of my house. Like this. And we're assuming they're all going to be the same fixture. Well, what if something changed in one of these? So for example, let's say the outside of this housing was a red color. Or let's say I wanted to change this to a red color. Well, you can see how even though I added a red color over here, I still have to manually add that red color to each one of these. So it's a really time consuming process. However, and we'll go ahead and delete these guys out. Let's say I was to do the same thing, but with a component. So light fixture. And we were to make five copies of this fixture. Well, now, if I decide that I want this piece to be red, I only have to go in here and change it once, and all the other instances of the component change as well. If I decide I want to go back to the white color, I just have to change one, and the others change as well. So this can be a huge time saver whenever things repeat in your model. So the groups are good for separating non-repeating geometry from each other inside of SketchUp. Components are really good for things that have multiple different instances inside of SketchUp. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Do you get the difference between groups and components now? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.